question 18 is the long question. On this occasion, it is about, it is about total internal reflection, optic fibres and refraction. It's useful to note that this topic doesn't appear in all exam boards, either at GCSE or air level. So if you've done OCR, GCSE and OCR air level, for example, you won't have come across total internal reflection since key stage three. So it highlights the importance of you reading around additional topics. Have a look at the specification, the syllabus provided by Oxford. Part A, explain what is meant by the phrases total internal reflection and critical angle. We are encouraged to use a diagram to explain your answer. So here we have three ray diagrams. When light strikes the boundary between two mediums, here where N2 has a lower refractive index than N1, for example, this could be glass and this could be air, the light will bend away from the normal. If I increase the incident angle here, the light will be refracted so much that it will all be reflected inside the original material inside this glass. This is total internal reflection, where light moving from a high refractive index to a lower refractive index, so from glass into air, strikes the boundary at such an angle that it is all reflected internally. That's total internal reflection. Now it follows that there must be an angle called a critical angle in between the two situations where the light travels perfectly along the boundary of the material. This angle is known as the critical angle, theta c. Part B, derive an equation relating the critical angle and the refractive indices of two materials, N1 and N2, where N2 has a lower refractive index than N1. Snell's law tells us that N1 sine theta 1, so that is the refractive index of the first material, multiplied by the sine of the incident angle is equal to N2, the refractive index of the second material, multiplied by the sine of the refract, refracted angle, theta 2. If theta 1 is the critical angle, if we take a look back at our diagram here, that must mean that theta 2, our angle between the normal here, is a right angle, so that's 90 degrees. So N1 sine theta c, the critical angle, is equal to N2 multiplied by sine 90. Now sine 90 is 1. So this leaves us with N1 sine theta c equals N2. So we can relate this. We can write sine theta c is equal to the ratio N2 divided by N1. Part C gives us an optical fibre. It says it's usually made of two materials, a core and a cladding, as shown in the diagram be below. Light may only be transmitted along the fibre if the incident angle of the light is less than a maximum angle theta max by using your expression from part B and Snell's law or otherwise derive an expression for theta max in terms of the core and cladding refractive indices only. So the first thing to be aware of in this question is that you have two refractions going on. You have refraction at this point here as the light enters the glass and then you'll have the total internal reflection as the light strikes the boundary between the core and the cladding. If total internal reflection is taking place, then that must mean that the refractive index of the cladding, N clad, is less than the refractive index of the core, N core. Let's take a look at this diagram. We've got light entering the glass core from the air, at an angle of theta max, that's the angle that will just produce total internal reflection. It's then refracted through an angle I've called theta 2 and hits the boundary between the core and the cladding at a critical angle here from the normal of theta c, the critical angle, uh, resulting in the light moving along the boundary there. The first thing we can do from this is we can see that the critical angle theta c is equal to 90 
minus theta 2. Snell's law tells us that n1, in this case the n of air, multiplied by the sine of that angle, which is theta max, is equal to the n of the core, this is n2, multiplied by sine of theta 2. And we know that theta 2 is 90 take away theta c. Another way of saying that would be the n of the core multiplied by the cosine of theta c because the difference between sine and cosine is 90 degrees. We also know from our earlier equation that the sine of the critical angle is equal to n2 divided by n1. So we can put this in our new terminology that the sine theta c equal to n2, which is the cladding, divided by n core, which is n1. Let's put our first equation in terms of cos theta c. So we'll rearrange this equation here cos theta c equals n air sine theta max divided by n core. And we should know that the refractive index of air is equal to 1. So the cosine of theta c is equal to sine theta max divided by n core. Now we need to get rid of these theta c's so that we have an expression for theta max in terms of n core and n clad only. So we need to recall a trigonometric identity to do this. Sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is equal to 1. That means that cos theta is equal to the square root of 1 minus sine squared theta. So we can change that to be cos theta c is equal to the square root of 1 minus sine squared theta c. Theta c. We know that cos theta c is sine theta max of n core, so let's write that in. Sine theta max divided by n core is equal to square root of 1 minus sine squared theta c. And we know that sine theta c is n clad over n core, so that gives us 1 minus n clad over n core, all squared. So sine of theta max equals n core multiplied by the square root of 1 minus n clad over n core all squared therefore theta max equals sine to the minus 1 n core square root of 1 minus n clad over n core squared. Part D, we have light coming out of the glass fibre at a perfectly vertical end. 
Uh, it then strikes a screen and it forms a uniform circular spot on the screen. Uh, a glass tank is then pushed against the end of the optic fibre so that it is perfectly touching the end of the fibre and is parallel to the screen. So we now need to sketch on the diagram above how the extent of the spot on the screen will change. So will the spot get smaller or larger really is the question. So the core is made of glass and if we look right back at the beginning of the question it tells us to assume that the refractive index of glass is larger than the refractive index of water. We know that when light strikes a boundary between a material with a high refractive index such as glass and a low refractive index such as water, it will bend away from the normal. That means that the rays of light coming out of here will bend like this and the rays of light coming out the other side will bend like this. So we're left with a larger image on the screen. Part E, the tank is kept in place and now white light is used instead of a laser. What will the image now look like? Well, different frequencies of light refract by different amounts. The higher the frequency, the more it will refract. That means you'll end up with a rainbow effect around the edge of the circle of light because the blue light will refract by more than the red light.